there was a time that we need to be in prayer. That time is upon us. Because what we do today and what we did last week affect generations to come. Our little grandchildren and children. And so we pray and ask God to see us through. I came across a scripture. I want you to enjoy it with me. The 103rd Psalm. The 103rd Psalm. I'm going to read the first few verses in the King James Version, and then I'm going to go back and grab the Message Bible because it really speaks to my heart, and I think it will yours. Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all, somebody shout all, his benefits. Now, can I just go and switch gears and go to the Message Bible? And it reads like this. O oh, my soul, bless God. From head to toe, I'll bless his holy name. O oh, my soul, bless God. Don't forget a single blessing. He forgives your sins, everyone. He heals your diseases, everyone. He redeems you from hell, saves your life. He crowns you with love and mercy, a paradise crown. He wraps you in goodness, beauty eternal, and he renews your youth. You're always young in his presence. Here is that verse 6. God makes everything come out right. Oh, I want you to remember that one. God makes everything come out right. He puts victims back on their feet. I'm just going to stop right there, all right? He puts victims back on their feet. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I, I want to talk about a song of thanksgiving. A little bird was flying south for the winter, but the air became so cold that it began to freeze and could not get to a warmer climate. For some time, the little bird was trying to make it south, but he finally collapsed in a large field where a herd of cows were grazing. Eventually, a cow came by and dropped manure on the freezing bird. At first, the bird was very upset. Here I am freezing to death, and now somebody done dropped manure on top of me. And all of a sudden, before too long, it became apparent to him that this manure that dropped on him was really a blessing in disguise, for it warmed him and thawed him out, and he became so excited that he started to sing. A, a cat happened to be passing by and heard the bird's joyful song, he followed it to the pile of manure, started digging until he found the little bird, and he ate it. But there are a number of lessons we can learn from this story. First of all, not everybody who drops manure on you is your enemy. Second, not everybody who digs you out is your friend. Third, don't get too comfortable in your messy situation. 
speaking of a messy situation. We have had a mess on our hands this week. And I believe most of us are in shock. Most of us wonder what happened. I think even our president-elect's group, they are shocked that they won. Everybody but Donald. Because in his alternate universe, he never loses. He would have just said, oh, it's rigged. Have y'all heard that message lately? This election, in my mind, was such a contrast to 2008. 2008, when hope took center stage. Everybody remember the images we all saw that night when Barack Obama and his family walked out on stage that cool Chicago night as the first family of our nation. Millions of people from all over the world, from China and Germany and the Philippines, and I mean, you name it, they were shouting with glee that there was hope coming to the world. But this election is different. We are so fragmented and we are so divided that the end of this election, we have protesters all over the nation, and the world is quiet. Such a contrast. And I believe that this contrast is the result of so many people being afraid that racial and economic inequities may grow again in America. Many of us are afraid that the greatest country in the world will only be great again for a certain crowd. And so I know for many today, this reality sounds scary. I have been spending so much time with my three young adults, all professionals, all doing well in life, who are so hurt in their minds by some of the choices that our country is making today. And so it's easy for us to go and to become depressed and to disengage. But I wanted to remind us as believers that this is the best time for our light to shine. Absolutely, this is the best time for our light to shine. And so I got some good news. Anybody want some good news? We, we've, had, we've had bad news all week, and for some of us it was good news. Everybody doesn't agree with how I might feel about the election, and everybody doesn't agree about how maybe you feel about the election, but I do know one thing. We can all agree on this, that God is still in control. Come on now. I, I, I figured I could get on some common ground there. God is what? Still in control. So no matter how much taiyoki, you know that stuff that little bird got in? You find yourself in, just know that God is able to deliver you and to sustain you through whatever you're facing. Sister Nita reminded us last week about hope. And she told us in her Women's Day message that no matter how dark the situation gets, just remember God is our sustaining hope. Whether you're black, white, brown, whether you're rich or poor, God is the only sustaining hope that we all have. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. You know, when I came across this scripture, I came across this text a few years ago when I was struggling with something that God had allowed to happen in my life. You see, you got to understand, Jeffrey talked in his prayer about God's sovereign will, but God has a permissive will, and he has a perfect will. God's perfect will is when he makes it happen. God's permissive will is when he allows it to happen. Remember when Israel 
warning the earthly king. And God's feelings were hurt because he felt like he was already their king. But they wanted to be like everybody else. And God, in his permissive will, allowed Israel to have their king. And Israel has been messed up ever since. Because God gives us free will. And if we keep asking him over and over and over for something that we really shouldn't have, God will allow us to have it. Amen. So I found myself at that point in my life slipping into depression. How many know that stuff happens that you find yourself fighting depression? And sometimes it would get you down. Matter of fact, depression will ring your doorbell just to see if you let him in. And if you look through the peephole and you say, no, you're not coming in here, then he'll ask you for a friend request on your Facebook page. And if you deny him that, then he wants to Snapchat with you. If you don't let him Snapchat, then he, some of you think, well, a pastor, don't worry about me. I don't worry about depression because I don't have Facebook and I don't have Snapchat. But you know what? He has your cell number. He would text you. He would do what he can to get in your psyche, to make you feel down, to put you down, and to help you feel like you're hopeless. And I stop by today to say to all of you that we are not in a hopeless situation because we are God's children. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, I've got a song of thanksgiving. Don't you know what makes the devil mad when you sing, when he thinks he's got you down? Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. And all that's within me, bless his holy name. Now, I could just preach on this one verse, verse 1 all day, because it is fascinating to me why God, who has everything, wants to hear something from me who has nothing. But look at what he says. David says, oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. How can you, finite, bless infinite? How can fallen humanity bless divinity? How can the clay somehow bless the potter? It doesn't make sense, does it? I mean, how can you give someone something who has everything? But yet David says, oh, my soul, I will bless the Lord. He's talking to himself. David's in the midst probably of a struggle. And he says, you know what I'm going to do in this struggle? I'm going to bless God in all that's within me. I like the way the, the, the message Bible said, from my toes to my head, I'm going to bless the Lord. I'm not going to let anything or anyone steal my joy. Amen. We need to be excited about the goodness of the Lord from head to toe. Remember David on one occasion got so excited about God, the Bible said he danced out of his clothes. And, and the thing about that, he was the king. It wasn't like he was just some normal guy, but he was the king. He forgot about his label, and he started lively worship his God. And that's what we have to do. Forget about our labels. Forget about how much education we have. Forget about what our names might be. When it comes to serving and worshiping God, we need to, oh, bless the Lord, all my soul, all of me. Sometimes, sometimes, you know, David's also said in the 100th Psalm that sometimes you don't feel like praising God, but you have to make a joyful noise. Make means to manufacture it. Amen. You Listen, you just have to manufacture that sometimes. That, that's how you stay connected. That's how you stay in relationship. Because you're so committed, and he's so committed to you. You think that he's not disappointed in some of the decisions we make and some of the thoughts that we have. But every now and then, God looks beyond our faults, and he sees our needs. And that's what we have to do when it comes to one another. I don't always agree with you, but I love you. I don't always see things eye to eye like you do, but I love you. Oh, bless the Lord. Oh, my. So David was so hyped. David, why are you so hyped? Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that's within me, I'm going to bless the Lord. 
They probably thought he was crazy when he was saying this particular verse. He was probably going through some adversity, but he was letting the devil know that though you may slay me yet, I'm going to trust in my God. Then he says, why? He said, go bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Now, again, he's talking to himself. He's saying, self, how dare you forget what God has already done? Self, how dare you forget who brought you through? Self, remember when you were a teenager and how God brought you out of that situation? Self, oh, bless the Lord, all my soul, for all of his benefits. All the things God has done for me, I'll never forget. Oh, that's why he's ecstatic. That's why he's beside himself. He's thinking about all the benefits that come with being a child of God. I have a friend who was a upper management person for our company when I worked for General Motors. And because General Motors ended up sending a lot of jobs out of the country, they started cutting back management, and he got cut back, making double-figure salaries, doing very well, had his own company car. But when they let him go, I found out a few months later that he took a job with Kmart. And I didn't understand why such a high-level man would work for Kmart. And it wasn't like he was in management. He was working in the store in the electronics arena. And I called him up and I said, hey, I said, so, Bob, tell me what happened. Why are you working at Kmart? And Bob said, oh, it's not because I need the money. I need the benefits. I need the benefits. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Bob was missing his benefits. And sometimes if we're not careful, we will miss out on the benefit package God has for us. Even in the midst of adversity, even in the midst when things aren't going the way we think they should go, God has a benefit package for each of us. And I don't have time today to go through that total benefit package, but can I just bring out some of them? I want to enumerate some of them. I want to bring some of them to the surface. The first thing that came out at me, benefit number one, he forgives your sins. David says, I'm so excited. My soul blessed the Lord because one of his benefits is that he forgives me of my sins. Now, if anyone knows anything about sin, David did. You know what that really means. God hates sin. He literally hates sin. The Bible says he hates sin. And for you to be forgiven of something that God hates, to put you in the right relationship with him, it's an incredible benefit. Look at what it says. He forgives your sin. That, that is a progressive statement. It, it, it means it's present tense. It's, it's, it's he forgives your sin. Didn't say he forgave, but he forgives. It's progressive. It's active. It's futuristic. It means that if I mess up tomorrow, I have a God that loves me so much. Come on, somebody. Now, that is no blank check for us to go and do whatever we want to do. Because if you love a God like that, who gives you such a benefit, you're going to do your best not to displease him. But the benefit is there. It's there. It's progressive. He forgives your sin. God's grace and forgiveness is like a calculator. When you mess up and stuff don't add up right, all you do is hit the clear button. And you're able to start all over again. And somebody should have didn't use the stuff you've done that, that you ain't told nobody about, the, the thoughts you've had that you ain't, like, you ain't told no. 
the, 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 the website you went to that you know you don't want nobody else to know about, David said, I'll get excited because all of that is forgiven. Somebody shout, what a benefit. Somebody shout, what a benefit. I am forgiven. Oh, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow. That makes me white as snow. No other. I wish I had somebody shout no other. No other help I know. Not your money, not your honey, and nothing that's fine. No other help I know. Nothing but the blood. Shake somebody's hand and say it's about the blood. Come on, tell them. Nothing but the blood. Nothing. But the blood. Jesus. Jesus. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. I don't have to talk about no other benefit. Somebody ought just to jump up and say, I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. And some of us, some of us leave that benefit on the table. In 1929, a gentleman by the name of George Wilson robbed a mail carrier and killed him. As a result of George Wilson's crime, George Wilson was given the death penalty. Well, that was in 1929, and for some reason, the president of the United States, at some point in his presidency, pardoned George Wilson. He pardoned him. But the strange thing about it, it blows your mind, is that George Wilson did not want to be pardoned. And so the whole question was, how can you reject the pardon of a sovereign king, or in our case, a sovereign president? So it went all the way to the Supreme Court. George Wilson, you can't reject my pardon. I'm sovereign. I have given you freedom from your crime. And George Wilson said, I don't want it for whatever reason. So when I went to the Supreme Court and the judge, Justice Marshall Rood, you know what he said? He said that when the offer, offer of a pardon is rejected by the offeree, the pardon is no pardon at all. When the offerer offers a pardon to the offeree, or re, and the offeree rejects the pardon of the offerer, it's no pardon at all. Somebody gonna get this in a minute. Jesus Christ hung on Calvary that the world might be pardoned. But there's some folks sitting in church today that don't want to accept the free gift of his pardon. Therefore, though it's your benefit and though it's free, you don't have it. How do you turn down that benefit? How do you keep coming to church over and over and over again and not receive it, the free gift of a pardon? Because you and I are guilty. Benefit number two. David said, oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. And forget not all his benefits. He says, now, here, here's, here's another one. He says, now, now if, if number one don't blow your mind, look at number two. Who healeth all of thy diseases. Huh. In other words, the God that I am a part of, he has healing power 
in his hands. One of the benefits of being a child of God is that we have access to God's healing power. Watch this. We have access to his, to the physical realm of healing, to the psychological realm of healing, to the spiritual realm of healing. That healing is available as a result of being a child of God. Now, be careful here, because God heals in many ways. See, we have this way of making this fanatical approach to God's healing and, and, and as if it's always got to be at church, as if it's always got to be some kind of deliverance service. He does do that too, but don't just, he's not just relegated to that. And in my case, I was blind in 1983. Uh, in 1987, rather, I could not see the face of my third-born child. I knew she was a girl, but I couldn't see her face. And I prayed. I was, I was a deacon, and I was, I was, I was really spirit-filled, and, and, and people around me were praying that God would restore my eyesight. It never came that way. But I heard about a doctor. Amen. And, and the doctor, the doctor that my doctor used, used his hands to cut away my cornea and to graft in some donated corneas. Amen. And now I can see. But God didn't, he can speak it, he can touch it, or he can orchestrate it. But God still heals. Somebody shout, he still heals. And I don't, is there anybody here ever been healed by God? Look at here. You know what? Everybody ought to wave your hand because some of you got cancer, and the only reason it's not bothering you now is God is holding you at bay. Anybody ever had a problem with your mind and you just couldn't get over something? And, and all of a sudden, God gave you a breakthrough in your mind? Because how many, won't God regulate your mind? See, the old folk used to say that, Lord, regulate my mind. I didn't understand it then, but now I understand what it means to regulate your mind. I mean, I'm, I'm just preaching the word. It says he healeth all my diseases. Now, I realize, I, I realize that we're in a fallen nature and we're going to die of something. Amen. Because the scripture says flesh and blood cannot inherit the what? The kingdom of heaven. So we got to get out of here. The songwriter, the old hymn that said, my building's got a leak. And my, now that's the old Negro spiritual. My soul has got to move. Amen. Because this building, amen, I, I, I've got another building. Uh, Y'all making me go back now. I've got another building. Not made by. That's it. Uh, Y'all remember them old songs? And my soul has got to move. And so eventually, total healing will take place. I, I, I got to quit now. I got to close. I. I told you that the reason you want to have some joy today is that, number one, that you have been forgiven of all your sins. And number two, that he healeth you of all of your diseases. But here's number three, and I'm going to sit down. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. That word redeemeth is an accounting term. It, it has something to do with some kind of transaction. He redeemeth. In other words, that word redeemeth means to actually pay back or to rescue. He redeemeth. He redeemeth my life. Watch this. From destruction. David said the reason that I'm going to bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that's within me from my toe to the top of my head is that he bought me from the very brink of destruction. I was literally, the devil had me dangling over 
hell. Y'all remember how upset people got when Michael Jackson was dangling his little son over the balcony? Yeah, and that's how, that's how the enemy has some of us just dangling. And you don't know when he's going to let you go. But David says, watch this, look at what he says. Look at it closely. Who redeemeth your life from destruction. God paid you back unto himself. Why would God pay for something he already owns? That's how much he loves you. He created you, he made you, and the Bible says because the devil has grabbed you and is in possession of you, he's willing to pay for you to come back. What a benefit. He will rescue you from cocaine. He will rescue you from whatever ailment, whatever alcoholism, pornography, you name it. God can rescue your life. Now, wait a minute. He's not talking about rescuing your little puppy as much as you love your little puppy. He's not talking about rescuing your car. He, he, I, he wants to rescue your life. I know your business is important to you, but... But there's nothing more important than your life. They asked one of the Rockefellers on his deathbed, who had all these millions and billions of dollars, and all he could eat was one little snow pea. He went out throwing it up. That's how sick he was. He had all this money. He had all of these stocks and bonds. But on his deathbed, he could only eat one little snow pea. Because money do you no good at some point in your life. He had relationships, but relationships couldn't save him. And they asked him, they said, what would you want? He says, I would give up all my money just to have one healthy day. And David said, he rescued me, my life, from destruction. I ran around the campus thinking I had it together. I was smart. I was popular. I was respected. But I had walked away from God. Everyone knew my name. I could go to the chancellor's house and ring his doorbell. I was the leader of the African-American movement on campus. Everybody knew me. But I was outside of God's will. I was, I was dangling at a very dangerous place with all of my popularity. And a young lady came to see me. And I thought she was coming to tell me how much she liked me. But she pulled out of her pocketbook a Bible. She said to me, Clarence, you are not walking in God's will for your life. And you know it and I know it. I said, how do you know me like that? And she said to me, Shana, she said to me, I can see it all in you. But God has something better for you. I wonder who's here today that all of this culture and all of these material things have got you off course. And maybe you're angry at somebody. And your anger at your mom or your anger at your dad or your anger at somebody that you know should love you but don't love you like they should is causing you to be angry with God. I stopped by today to tell you that if you would release that to him, he would replace that anger with love. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul. 
Oh, bless the Lord, all that is within me. For he forgives me of all my sins. He healeth me of all my diseases. rescued me from destruction. Would you bow your heads with pastor right now? Father, I don't know who I'm talking to, but you know. There's a benefit package with that young lady's name on it. There's a benefit package with that young man's name on it. It's all theirs. You're offering it, but they've got to receive it. I pray right now, at the close of this prayer, that they will stand up and tell somebody, excuse me, I'm going to get my benefit package from God. benefit package has been provided through his son Jesus Christ who died on Calvary for your sins he rose for your sins and he's sitting at the right hand of God right now pleading with God for your life you can be in relationship with him right now amen would everybody stand? The choir is going to sing. All you have to do is make a decision.